All right, welcome to your video on a new technique for integration called U substitution. So we will be making subs within each one of our integrals. So if we think back to our rule for integration, taking the integral, taking the antiderivative of x to the n power, we end up increasing that power by 1 and then dividing by that new power. And then we have this constant of integration, the plus c, because our function could have been plus 20 units or down 100 units. We don't know. But when we take the derivative, we get right back to x to the n, because the derivative of that constant, regardless of what it was, will end up being 0. Well, if this is true, when we have everything with x's, then it makes sense that this statement right here, if I change x to u, and I change x to u, and I change x to u, that I should be able to have this same rule hold for me. But if we think about this from previous units where we've talked about u as a function of x, okay, this is basically going to help us undo a chain rule. So it's going to help us work a little bit to figure out how to take an antiderivative when we have potentially a product involved in there that would have come from a chain rule for derivatives. So what's important to note here is that we do have this is in terms of du. Okay, just like this was dx because our variable of integration was talking about x. Here, our variable of integration is talking about u, and our function is u, but u is actually dependent on x. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work, some substitution, to get us to a better format where we just see u's and du's together. All right, so let's dive in with an example. Here I have the integral of 2x times the square root of x squared minus 2 dx. And if I look at that, I have some sort of a product going on, and I don't have a product rule for integration. So instead, I've got to try this u substitution method. So really, inside of this square root function, I have a whole other function. It's x squared minus 2. And I know that the chain rule helps me undo composition, or take the derivative of compositions, rather. So here, I'm going to try to let my u that I'm going to substitute for be the part that's inside the composition. Well then, using some calculus, if I take the derivative of u with respect to x, I'm going to end up with 2x. To isolate then the du, I end up with 2x dx. Thinking about substitutions that I can make over here in this integral, I can replace all of this with u, still to the 1 half power. Then I can replace 2x dx, right? That's all being multiplied together. 2x dx. I can replace all of that with du. Well, now, great, this integral is in the same format as this rule right here, which was really in the same format as our power rule up here that we know works because of our limit definition that we did over and over to get to that shortcut. So to take the antiderivative here, I'm going to say u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c. But I started with x's as my variable, so I need to end with x's as my variable. Well, so now I'm just going to basically undo my substitution. I can replace u, yeah, you got it, with x squared minus 2. And then dividing by 3 halves would be the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. This was an indefinite integral, so we were finding a family of functions, which is why we need our plus c. Now, if I were to take this derivative to check my work, I could bring this 3 halves down in front, 3 halves times 2 thirds, all all cancels out, so I'd have x squared minus 2, drop the power, times the derivative of the inside. And this right here is what we started with up there. Red and, red and blue make purple. Threw in a little bit of color, color knowledge for you. So we can always check our work by taking the derivative with these. It's just going to be a chain rule that is involved because we're undoing the chain rule for the integral. All right, so let's look at this one. Here we have the Beatles' yellow submarine. So looking at this, yes, I could square this out and then distribute this one in and then take the integral of the polynomial, which we know how to do from our previous units. However, instead of doing all of that algebra work, let's see if we can come up with a u substitution to help us. So when you pick your u, again, you usually want to think about what's inside of another function. Okay, so we're trying to undo that composition idea. You also might want to think, what do I see as u where I also see its derivative kind of in there? 
And so hopefully you're telling yourself that our u should be x to the third plus 6x. So that way when I take the derivative, that didn't change color. When I take the derivative, I'm going to end up with 3x squared plus 6. And I can just multiply that differential, the dx, to the other side. Well, now when I look at this integral, I get to replace x to the third plus 6x and make a substitution with u to the second power. Then I get to replace 3x squared plus 6dx, 3x squared plus 6dx with du. And this becomes an integral that I know how to do. So u to the second integrates to u to the third over 3 plus c. But this problem started with x's, so I'm going to go back and, yes, you're right, I'm going to plug in x to the third plus 6x to the third power, all divided by 3 plus c. If you check your work and take the derivative, the 3 swings down in front, they cancel, drop the power, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which was 3x squared plus 6. All right, well, sometimes you might need to make a small adjustment if your du does not just come up right away. So looking at this, hopefully we see that this should be our u value, which means that du is going to be equal to 12x to the third dx. So if I think about this integral, I can replace this 3x to the fourth plus 1 with a u. But now I've got to figure out how do I replace x to the third dx. So there's a couple ways that teachers do this. I would say solve this for x to the third dx, which means I need to just divide this side by 12. Some teachers also would say, okay, I need to see a 12 in this integral. So I'm going to multiply by 12. That's not a 12. I'm going to multiply by 12 which means I need to adjust in front by 1 12th. Because if you multiply by 12 and immediately divide back by 12, you've really just multiplied by 1. You're right. So we haven't changed the value at all. So I can write this as 1 12th. And now this x to the third dx with a 12, x to the third dx with a 12, all gets replaced with du. Notice that that's the same thing if you had solved over here. 1 12th du is equal to x to the third dx. So now I can integrate. The 1 12th just kind of chills in front. This will be u to the third over 3 plus c. But I need to go back and substitute in my u value. So I'm going to get 3x to the fourth plus 1 to the third power, all divided by 36 plus c. And I promise if you take that derivative, you do end up with x to the third times 3x to the fourth plus 1 to the second power. My headphone fell out, which means my microphone might have stopped for a minute. But the 3 is going to swing down, so this will simplify to 12. Later you'll get the derivative of this, which also has a 12 in it, which is how those 12s disappear. All right, so sometimes the u sub thing won't work. And what ends up happening in calculus is sometimes you learn a new, I don't know why this has a box around it, sometimes you learn a new technique and you just want to use it all the time. Right? It's like discovering the newest, latest sauce that you want to put on something. You just want to put it on everything. But we have to think a little bit mathematically and understand that we have a lot of different techniques that build. Kind of like when you did geometry and you had SOHCAHTOA and you had Pythagorean theorem and you had Alcijon hypotenuse. You have this whole toolbox of things that you can use. So you got to be strategic in which one you pick. So looking here, I would say that I would start with u equals 3x to the fourth plus 1 which means that du equals 12x squared dx. Well, I can replace this part with a u squared. I could even adjust for this 2dx, but I have this x squared. I can't adjust and just throw in an x squared so that I get my du the way that I want it. Because as soon as I introduce a variable, I've changed the whole value of this function as opposed to this last one where I multiplied by 12 but immediately divided out by 12, we can't do that with a variable. That's only a benefit of having a constant. So this technique is not going to work for us. We cannot make an x squared just appear in our integral so that we can sub in. 
Instead, this is where algebra is going to help you. So this being squared really just means to distribute it out. So 9x to the 8th plus 6x to the 4th plus 1. Now this is just a polynomial. I can go ahead and take the antiderivative of that. So why don't you go ahead and do that real quick. Pause the video. We should end up with something plus c. Seriously, pause the video. Do one on your own. Did you pause it? <coughs> Successful, I hope. And then you can take the derivative of this to get back to this if you need to convince yourself that you did things accurately. All right, so sometimes you get a little bit extra. You get a little bit more than you need. So in this integral, hopefully we're starting to see we want to pick the thing inside of the other function. So I'm going to let u be equal to x squared plus 1, which means that du is equal to 2x dx. All right, well, this can all be replaced with u. No big deal. But now I've got to try to somehow get 5x dx to somehow substitute in with 2x dx. So I think what's easiest here is to take the 5 and just kind of ignore it. Put it out in front. And then from our technique from before, I can replace x dx. I'm going to multiply by 2, which means I'm going to divide by 2 also. So now what I end up with is 5 halves the integral of 2x square root of x squared plus 1 dx. And now all of my substitutions work for me. So 5 halves times the integral of u to the 1 half times 2x dx can be perfectly replaced with du. Now if you don't like that way, you can also think to yourself, how do I magically make a 2 into a 5? Well, I would need to multiply both sides by 5 halves. Right? So then these 2's cancel out. 5x dx, which is what I wanted to replace, could be subbed in with 5 halves du. Either way works. You're going to see it a lot of ways, especially if you go get help in the MRC or if you talk to a different teacher. So I want you to see both of them and just understand you can pick. So now I can integrate this. 5 halves stays out in front. This is going to become u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c. Go ahead and replace that u value. So we're going to get 5 halves times 2 thirds u is equal to x squared plus 1 all to the 3 halves plus c. If you want to be messy, you can leave it. If you want to clean it up, you can write it as 5 thirds. And we're good. Again, you could take the derivative and check your work. All right, last one. For more complicated problems, you might solve for dx. This one actually isn't more complicated. It's just showing you that different way of thinking about it instead of multiplying by 12 and dividing by 12 or multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2. We're going to look at it a little differently. So I'm going to let u be equal to 1 minus 2x, which means that du is equal to negative 2 dx. So this will all get substituted nicely, u to the 1 half. Still have my integral sign. And now I just want to replace dx. So that means I need negative 1 half du equals dx. I'm just going to put the negative 1 half out in front. You don't have to. And now I could integrate this. This will be u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. I really like that 3 halves today for some reason. Plus c. This is going to flip, so negative 1 third. I'm doing this kind of quickly so I don't run out of time. Hopefully it all works out for you. Plus c. Okay. If you don't like that way, you can still say this negative 2 dx is what you need to replace. So I need to introduce a negative 2, which means I need to cancel out a negative 2. And notice then this gets subbed in for du. Negative 1 half gets pulled out in front. It all comes out the same, just depends on how you might want to look at it. All right, so make sure all parts are accounted for, accounted for and that you sub in correctly for each one. Tomorrow in class, we just have a work day to practice U substitutions and identifying which one to pick for the U and then practicing your subs. So I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.